Yes. I sort of forgot um, exactly what I was going to say in the bulk of uh, my return message to possible said feminists, but it was to just give a bit of a short example of how cognitive bias works. And that's the trap that a lot of these people are stuck in. That they uh, are in just a cycle of cognitive bias. And, you know, they go on there. It, it's a bit of a, a step like... The way it works is, first of all, I don't like this, obviously, followed by... Um, the easiest option out, because we always know that millennials particularly, uh, well not millennials in general, but just all these SJW type millennials, they want to find a quick answer out. And it's the one that is the most convenient. It feels the most comfortable, the most convenient, because they're not at fault. And I believe this is why they often go into denial a lot of the time. They're... Um, little sheep over there. No, you can't barely see them. Because they're not at fault. Now, this is part of actual Marxist doctrine, uh, is that, uh, you know, you haven't got something and somebody else has because in some way, shape or form or manipulation or uh, trickery um, they've stolen it from you and so therefore we need equal wealth distribution and they only got it because they worked out how to dupe you of it or you know give you uh, a lot less than you should otherwise deserve in your earnings and, and then yeah so they're very receptive because it's an easy way out it's a convenient excuse that <coughs> Any problems they face is always someone else's fault. Uh, and, you know, okay, rightio, so they can't... The boy they love doesn't love them back. So then it turns into, well, this is somehow somebody else's fault. Uh, so it's, you know, part of the male patriarchy that I have to go to a job or... It's, you know, anything that they're having troubles with, it's somebody else's fault. So there'll be some doctrine, like feminism, like a lot of these social justice warrior things, of third wave feminism, um, that will explain to them, hey, first of all, this is not your fault. So basically what happens is they're being told what they want to hear initially. This is not your fault. Oh, thank God, that's what I wanted to hear. Followed by, but it is the fault of this god-awful big conspiracy theory known as the male patriarchy or some bullshit. Um, and that makes them feel all right. And then they go out there and, you know, it works like this and it works like that, but it's fairly vague and fairly very generalizing and, and not really specific. So they go out there, they can't really understand it completely because nobody can actually fully understand it because it's so damn vague and, and that's intentional that it's not supposed to be easily provable or it's provable on false narratives only. But they see signs of these false narratives so they say, well, I've seen a sign of these false narratives so this is proof that this is right. A lot of the CEOs of companies are rich white men. That's proof. Not that these guys got up at five in the morning and worked till seven at night, but that's proof that the white males do run everything because look at all the white male CEOs. <gasps> that's proof. So they go, shit, this feminism stuff is right. So they go back and they listen to more. And they get more gung-ho and they get more, you know, wound up into it and they get more, 
oh my gosh, I finally found something that's, you know, and there's other bits and pieces they find that, first of all, rubs them the right way, tells them what they want to hear, that it's not their fault. <sighs> then backed up by a conspiracy theory, affirmations of that conspiracy theory occur because they can see this and this and that, and then they're drawn closer to it, closer to it, closer to it. But effectively, it's like a moth to an open fire. It's like a dog chasing its tail. And I would say to them, in my responses to them, that it is almost like watching a crystal meth addict spiralling down the fucking rabbit hole into an echo chamber of self-affirmation, cognitive bias, and blaming the world for every other problem that they have, just like welfare bums do, white trash does, and crystal meth addicts usually do. And the world owes them a this and a that and a blah, blah, blah. But see, it's gone from being sort of these fucking idiot, you know, pill heads, meth heads, ice addicts, as we call them in Australia. Crystal meth, they call ice here, so we call them ice addicts. Um, not that it's really been... Uh, yeah, problems in the United States started long, you know, back in the fucking 93, 94, and we've only been really bombed badly by it in the last few years, but getting off the track, you know, and just tell her, it, it's, there's a deep, sol uh, there's a solace in knowing that uh, I was indeed correct, you are a third wave feminist, but there's a, also accompanied by a deep sadness of watching a crystal meth addict spiralling down into self-pity, self-affirmation and blaming everybody else for everything that didn't work, blaming society for it not being right and that everything in society has to change to suit them and uh, they're just spiralling down the fucking drain they are really uh, with all this echo chamber of self affirmation and uh, cognitive bias uh, and you know this is one of these things uh, the cognitive bias is one of these things where uh, it, it's like that you know you you see a thing you can go and look at another video of it but it, it's where you reaffirm your own bullshit by listening to more of the same shit that is rubbing you the right way. Um, you know, and that happens with the right wing as well as the left wing, uh, although neither side would honestly want to admit it, but it does. Uh, I'll just turn this stove off. Just cooking some eggs here. Um, you know, <laughs> and you can tell them that they'll end up being a, a bit of twisted old cat lady that talks to themselves, you know, and, and they'll miss the one thing, and I've seen this, they're talking about identity, and they said, like, a man defines his identity by his job, usually, um, and they said, but a woman often, when it comes down to it, if you could put it into one main thing, like the main, the most highest point is, mother or not mother. And so you can play on that as well, you know, and, and you can tell them that, you know, just imagine when all this is over, you can pat yourself on the back, tell yourself that you're right, tell everybody that everyone was out to get you, the male patriarchy was out to get you, but you'll miss hearing those little words come from a little voice, Mom, Mom, Mom. That'll trigger the fuck out of me even more. <laughs> You know, and and this is the thing, like, <laughs> eventually, oh, it might be very eventual, you know, they, they're so triggered that they just fucking, oh, they don't use the site, don't use the app, 
close their account, which is probably what will happen. Um, you know, and yeah. But another one, just to fuck with them a little bit more, <laughs> just tell them on occasion that you love them. Just, just fucking randomly out the middle of nowhere, you know, and this and that. And I know you're a nice girl and I do love you, but still the cognitive bias is getting to you, blah, 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 blah. Still you're going to end up a, a bitter old cat lady or <laughs> But I do love you, you know, because that's the other thing. They, um, you know, they, they, they won't know how to take it. It'll, it'll, you know, they, this idea that a man comes up to a girl and, and says something, you know, even tells them that they look hot today, like they can class that as sexual harassment, and they have, you know, but when they say, you know, you just say, I love you, you don't, you're not necessarily saying what form of love you mightn't want to have. You know, if you say I want to have sex with you, then, you know, the fact, but if you just say I love you, it could be a, like a brotherly love or a sisterly love. It could be, um, you know, anything. It's This is the thing, you've kept it non-specific, so they can't claim sexual harassment on something that's so non-specific. And then at the end of the argument, you always got to tell them that, well, I really enjoyed that, and I'd love to do it again with you next time. And, uh, you know, and <laughs> tell them you enjoyed arguing with them and you'd love to do it with them again. <laughs> Shit like that, just like, it just, it's so far the other way from what they expected that they'll just, it'll fucking drive them mad. Because what pisses them off even more than being emotionally triggered themselves is things that just go completely against their expectations, completely against the grain of what they were expecting or what they would assume would happen or what they were thinking. Things that are just so fucking the other way that it's just almost like confusion sets in, you know? Um, like telling them that you love them after they've tried to slander the shit out of you, you know? <laughs> And they're really fucking, oh, there's anger, there's confusion, they don't know what way they're fucking going because they've been, not only are they upset, they're confused by you telling them that you love them. And if you don't want to tell them that, tell them Jesus loves them as well or something like that, why not? You know, fucking tell them whatever. <laughs> and this is the thing. Once there's something that they really can't understand, and especially something that never went to their doctrine of feminism, like they expect to argue with a man and argue and argue and argue, and oh, you're just mansplaining. Like if you explain yourself, that's mansplaining. So that's now passed off almost like people pointing at e-beggars saying, you're e-begging, you should get a job, this is wrong. Um, oh, well, they're just a troll. So you just sort of bypass by giving the troll label. You know, they just slap a label on you and, oh, uh, that just dismisses you instantly. And, you know, mansplaining is another one of these labels. Anytime a man tries to explain something, a mansplain, oh, uh, another label, oh, uh, he's just mansplain, oh, uh, out. Funny thing is, they don't have any label to dismiss a woman explaining shit away. Or, or sometimes they can turn around, it's it's a bit like they, they turn around and say that they're fucking, you know, they've been fucking hypnotized or whatever and, and, and enslaved into this, you know, male patriarchy belief, you know, and if you're a black person and you say that no black people shouldn't get, you know, special treatment because they're black, then you're an, a coon or an Uncle Tom, I think is the main ones they use. Candace Owen talks about it a bit because uh, Candace Owens talks about it because she's uh, copped quite a lot of it recently. Um, and you know, you're a race traitor or something like that, you know, and they might be a gender traitor or something like that. Um, but what really fucks them is when they don't get the response that feminism told them they would get, when they don't get the response that they would expect to get, when you don't fight back, in fact, even agree with some of their stuff, in fact, even extend it by slandering yourself, like I was explaining before, with the whole breast milk thing, um, you know, <laughs> it just fucks them right up, because they're expecting you to behave in a certain path. A, you get offended, B, you get pissed off, 
and that's it. So the stupid part of this ideology, this third wave feminism, is it's not like Islam tries to garner believers. Christianity tries to garner believers, and then you end up with some fucking asshole hypocrite pastor like mine. Um, <laughs> you know, all these things they try to bring people on board. Now, in doing that, they some will, but most don't. Um, try and slander them or tell them they're wrong. But if they do, then it's got to be instantly, instantly backed up with, but it's not your fault. That's just the way the system was. That's just what you were dragged into by society, by the system or, or the world or whatever they want to call it. Uh, Christianity often refers to it as worldly things, you know, and the world, not society like most of these friggin' feminism things do and whatnot. Um, so that's one of these things, you know. And the trouble with third wave feminism is it doesn't really try and convert any men to feminists. It just slander, slander, slander. You are the problem, you're the problem. You're the problem because you're white. You're the problem because you're male. You're the problem because it, 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 it. there's almost no point of converting you. Unlike Islam, unlike Christianity, there's no real point of, of well, this is the way it is, but, you know, really speaking, uh, it's not your fault. So, so, okay, you've done wrong, but, you know, you've been a sinner, but... But that was because you were influenced by the world, so now you can repent, you know, that sort of thing. Um, they just, the fucked up part of the doctrine is it just keeps slamming you, slamming you, slamming you. And you're supposed to just curl up in a ball and just say, I'm sorry, I'm feeling so much white male guilt or fucking whatever, you know, and, and all that sort of shit. <laughs> you're, so, you're not supposed to join it, you're just supposed to submit to it and then cry tears that you done wrong and apologize to it. But they don't really have a good way to convert you to it. So that's a failing in that ideology. Uh, and it is an ideology. Um, and, you know, so what you do is you do exactly what they don't expect. Um, now, they do expect you to apologize at some point, but what you should do is say, you know... <laughs> Not only are you what you said, I'm fucking three times worse. And then just keep throwing in the I love you one because that just, just, just go the exact opposite direction and give them the outcome they never expected and that really fucking ruffles their feathers. But anyway, that's me uh, part two on it all and uh, yeah.